Today we're going to do an exercise in layers and masks and inverting. This is a bit of a tricky exercise and this is being done in CS5. We're going to have a number of layers with single people on multiple layers which we want to make into an image where there's multiple people in one single image. Sounds a bit complicated doesn't it? Let's get stuck straight into it. If you'd like to use the files that I'm using today, you can download the file from www.melnewman.com forward slash YouTube downloads. And the file name is Multi Students Start Here. Now, what I have, if I just bring my layers across here, we have a number of layers where we've got different people on different layers. Now, I'm going to open my layer options and I'm going to make my images a little bit bigger so I can just see a little bit easier or you can see a little bit easier on the screen um, the layers that we're dealing with. Now when we're looking at this particular image if I go up to these layers and start turning them all off except for the very bottom one what you'll notice is that every single layer has a different person on a different layer in a different spot on these stairs. The idea here is to try and work out how we can get all of these people on the stairs at once, even though it was shot individually. Now you can use this image or um, by all means get a tripod, some friends together and go out and give it a go yourself. The first thing we need to really think about with layers is that when we look at layers, we look from the top of the layers to the bottom of the layers like a stack. So we'll look down upon them. So what is at the top of the stack is what we see first. Now in an image like this, we also need to consider that some people are behind others. So we need to stack them from front to back or top to bottom. So the people at the front need to be at the top and the people at the back need to be at the bottom. So this particular layer here is our very back layer because he's right at the very back of the stack. At the moment he's layer 2 and we need to drag him underneath our background layer. I need to make sure my background layer here first is not locked so that I can drag that down under there. To unlock my background layer I double click on it, it's going to change the name to layer 0 and I click OK. So here's my layer 3 and I'm going to drag him down to the very bottom. If I turn those other two layers off you can now see that my very bottom layer is the guy who's jumping in the air. This girl here who's in a second going to be talking to herself is more forward uh, and one of the ones up the very front. So I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to drag it for the moment right up to the top so I know that she's right out of the way. We'll turn that one off again. Let's go down to the one above it and again she's talking to herself but she's still right up the top there so let's put her right up the top with the other one and turn her off again. Our next layer, he seems to be in around about the right spot. He's in front of the guy jumping, but he's lying on the stairs. This one here is also, he, the stairs back here, he's in the centre. So he's in front of the other one, so he needs to be above him in the stack. Here he is again, busy boy, getting around a bit. And he's sliding down the stairs, and at this point in time, that's a pretty reasonable spot for him to be. Now this girl is actually in front of the two girls talking to themselves. So if I grab this one and take the layer right to the very top and turn that off for now, hopefully when we get to there we'll find that she's actually sitting in the right place. Our next layer, this girl here, is actually behind the guy who's sliding down the stairs. So at the moment her layer is above him, but she's actually behind him. So we need to make sure that that layer is below him in that stacking order. This little guy here is in around about the right spot, so we can leave him there. And now we've got our two girls talking to themselves, and we've got the girl right down the very front. So we've done the first thing. We've gotten these layers in an order where we know that we've got from front to back to be able to go through each of these and uh, make sure that as we're able to look down through our layers, we know that the stacking order's in the right place and nobody will be in front of one or the other. 
Now that we've got it to this point, we need to start masking out some of these guys. So I'm going to take all of the little uh, eyes off again so that we can come down to just these very first two. Now this very first bottom one is going to be our uh, base layer and this is where we're going to see all the rest of the information that's here. We're not going to worry to move any of that at all. We're going to turn on the layer above it and on this layer we're going to add a mask. Now a mask allows us to create areas that we can see through on a layer and in this particular case we're going to first paint out what we want to see and then we're going to invert the layer. So here's my layer you can see it's, I've selected it because it's got a white line around it and I'm going to get a paintbrush and I'm going to make sure that my paintbrush is black because black is going to give me a black hole and I'm going to turn my flow up to 100% and I'm going to paint out this guy in the front here. Now although he looks as though he's disappearing and I've now got nobody on the stairs, what I really want to do with this guy is turn this mask so that my whites are black and my blacks are white. To do this I hit Control i on a PC and that inverts my mask for me. Now if I come in nice and close here you can see that here's my guy but I've actually, whoops, I've actually lost a little bit of the, the foot up here. So I'm just going to bring this in a little bit closer, remembering that I've got a black mask and I need black paint to just bring those toes back in again. If I happen to accidentally take his head out again, I can use my X key to switch my black and white paintbrush over and then I can just put his head back in again. I turn my next one on and I do the same thing. I add a layer. I use the black ink, so at the moment I've got white, I need to go to black and I'm going to just paint this guy in and you can see I'm starting to overlap but these guys are now going in the correct spot as to where they should be. So we we'll just paint him in the back there and as soon as I've got him painted in I can go control I and there's a few little spots there that I've missed so I'll just go in there and clean that up a bit like so. But see how when I've done this I've actually got a bit of a problem now where I've taken this guy's neck off underneath here. So if I get my black brush so I can see through this bit I can put his neck back. I can also put his legs back and his feet back. I also need to come up here and make sure that these legs don't disappear as well otherwise we're going to be losing our jumper at the back. Now it's now just a simple uh, job of going through each of these oops, and finding our model, painting them in with our black on white. If we did it the other way around we'd have to try and find where our model was to paint them in. This way we've got a really good idea of where they are to start with. So when we hit Control i to invert the mask it um, allows us to see that person through perfectly and it's only where they overlap that we start to have a few issues. This one here is a good one because it's going to be overlapping because the girl's there so I need to be a little bit more careful with how I uh, bring him in. Now I know down this side is not too much of a problem but when I come up to this leg I need to be a little bit more careful with how I bring him in because I know I'm going to have to bring her back in as well once I've got him painted in. I can even start to see her behind him as I paint him in there. So just bring his elbow, there we go. So control I again and I've actually not done too bad of a job here. I'll just come in a little bit there and just come up on that edge there just to make sure that they're not overlapping and I haven't actually missed any little bits there. She's lost her knee, we'll put her knee back in. When we get to this one here, this one we don't have to be quite so careful with because there's nothing that's overlapping on it. So I can very easily and quickly paint him out. Do control I and he's back in again. Now this layer here is a little tricky. If I turn this layer on and off you'll actually notice, if I just come out a little bit, 
that the stairs have moved a little in this particular shot as it's been brought in. So what I need to do here is select that layer. I'm just going to drop the opacity of my layers a little bit and use my Move tool uh, just to get it so that my stairs line up. So this one was just a little bit out of alignment. Turn my opacity back up and continue by masking with my brush and mask her out and control i make sure she's whoops make sure she's well and truly in there and then i've lost a little bit behind here so i'll just come in a little closer and just go around her head to make sure that we've got the feet in behind there now i've done photoshop for quite a few years so this is not taking me very long to complete this task. Normally it takes a, a student who's new to Photoshop around about half an hour to an hour to get the hang of this. Sometimes you do it and you'll go okay well I've got it done but I didn't really understand what I was doing and I think I'll just go back and have another go at it. The more times that you can do this and the more times you can really get good at what it is that you're uh, trying to accomplish in this exercise the better your Photoshop skills will become. Last but not least, we'll get rid of this young lady down the front who didn't want to look at us, like so. And Control i Now we can see some stairs through her head. So let's just go in here nice and close, remembering that I need black to be able to see through this particular layer. There we go. Put her bottom back on the step as well. And there is a very quick way of making a number of people appear on the stairs and off. I hope you've enjoyed today's little exercise. Now this exercise might take you some time to do. Remember where to get the files from? www.melnewman.com forward slash YouTube downloads. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully we'll see you again soon.